And what's going on, everyone? Welcome into a week 11 of teasers with the G's. <laughs> now, welcome into a parlay with the G's. Stoked to have everyone back on this edition. Last week was fucked up. All right. I'm just going to say it right now. Last week was fucked up. I was excited coming off of the win from the week before, but it's the NFL and it's going to humble you week to week. And uh, let's just go over the scores here really quick. Uh, so the spread category last week, that was tied. All right, we didn't have a winner, but it was a close one. Uh, Connor took nine spreads total and LJ took nine spreads total last week. As far as the over-under category, the wizard himself has been defeated. It's okay. LJ took that category with seven total. You and I trailed with six. I'm surprised I tied you. You know, that that is your category that you take. And then in the money lines category, again, we had a tie in the money lines category. Uh, LJ had eight total. You had eight total, Connor. And I had six money lines total. That's why I'm saying last week was fucked up. It was just fucked yep. up. Let's call it what it is. <laughs> a lot of games that didn't work out the way we thought. I'll say that. Hey, look, and you got my personal props because I'm thinking back to some swing games last week, but you had the Texans as dogs winners last week. You had the Vikings as dogs winners last week. And that commander's game was close. They almost mm -hmm. pulled that off and you had them as a dog as well. So I like your dog senses, not the spidey senses. It's the dog senses. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So let's do a parlay recap. Uh, worst parlay of the week for me. You know, I, I was two for six. Uh, the, I thought the Ravens won that game when I was checking in on those scores. They actually lost that game to the Browns. 33 to 31. I had the Bengals against the Texans. They lost. I had the Saints against the Vikings. They lost. I got the Cowboys against the Giants. I got the Seahawks against the Commanders. And, uh, you know, in our side text, I tripled down on the Bills with everything coming down to the wire. I, when I watched that field go, go in, I had an outer body experience and I went ah! to the person next to me. And then I turn around and I see a flag down, 12 men on the field. And the ponies are riding home with that. That that was a tough one. I couldn't believe that, honestly. Like, they, they couldn't have tried any harder to lose that game with the penalties, uh, you know, just the interceptions, the fumbles, the, every all the turnovers. Like, they're making Denver look like a better team than they actually are. And I hate it because, again, they're last in the AFC West. And people are saying that there's still a chance for playoffs. I'm like, they are behind the Chargers and the Raiders, who have both substantially better teams and have beaten the Broncos. So I don't know what's going on with the, the media. I hate it. But the Bills did no justice for us this week. Yeah, it's get it's getting a little weird. You know, Broncos on a three-game winning streak now. Joe Burrow, I just saw um, a news drop. He's out for the season. So the AFC could get a little interesting here, especially if you're a Raiders fan creeping into that wild card spot. You know, maybe that's something we're going for here. In the In hunt, the hunt. For sure. And um, yeah, that, that was an interesting one. I mean, I knew that game was screwed from the jump as soon as um, James Cook got stripped on the first play. The series after that, Josh Allen, I think he threw a second interception. It's just not, the, the Bills are playing sketchy football. That's all we got to say there. All right, uh, Connor, your parlay last week, you had the Bengals money line. Unfortunately, uh, Texans took that one. Ravens money line, Packers and Steelers under 39. Colts and Patriots under 43 and then got the Raiders money lined against the Jets. So uh close yeah. one, but a tough parlay week. Started out really hot with the morning game in uh, London, but then crumbled in the yeah. morning late. So, Hey, we got, we got to ride all these things all the way through. And by the way, I died last week. I died. I had the Bengals in survivor. And I said, if not, I was going to take the Seahawks, but I have to honor that I chose the Bengals first. And you and LJ will be surviving going into week 11 here. You had the Colts against the Pats. And uh, he had a ballsy one. He had the Cardinals against the Falcons. But uh, K1 coming back and, and getting That was a crazy time. call. That, yeah, that's how you win the survivor picks right there. <laughs> all right. So with all that being said, let's jump over now. We're going to go to the Sunday morning set. This is week 11. It's a new week. It's a new day. This is not week 10. This is a opportunity for us to get back at this back in the win columns, and back on our bank accounts, hopefully not getting screwed over here. So let's start off with the Sunday morning set. This is 1 o'clock on the East Coast. We have the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to play the Carolina Panthers. Cowboys lead this series 10-5 to 5 all time. Dallas is 10.5-point favorites with an over-under of 42.5. And, 
Dallas was 17 and a half point favorites last week against the Giants. You and LJ did not flinch when it comes to that spread. I was reluctant to take it, but I took it for the purposes of the podcast. Connor, do you think the Cowboys have what it takes to cover this large spread again? Yeah, I mean, the last the Cowboys will blow out a team like they did last, you know, earlier this season and then last week. And then like it seems like the game after that, it's, you know, they might barely win or they might blow it. So, I mean, I don't think the Panthers are the team that we're going to be like the Cardinals and actually somehow upset them. Um, I know they're on the road, but I like minus 10 and a half against a team that's struggling like the Panthers. So I will take Dallas minus 10 and a half. You know, the over under it's low enough, but I haven't seen anything out of the Panthers D that makes me think they can really slow it down. And I think with the injuries on Dallas, Panthers can score, you know, the over hit last week, maybe a little bit of garbage time at the end with the Giants, but um I'd rather I'd rather ride the over on this as well. I think the Dallas could easily put up 35 of those points. All we need is eight more to cover. So uh, I'll take the over as well. Hey, look, Cowboys fan, we like hearing this. I've kind of come to the conclusion now that the Cowboys are good at beating up bad teams. When we have to play good teams, a.k.a. the 49ers, all right, getting blown out by them, a.k.a. the Eagles losing by four points. The Eagles this year gets a little rough, all right? But when it comes to bad teams, I feel like we're good at it. We're good at handling business. Not entirely worried about this game being on the road. I feel like Cowboys fans travel well. Uh, and the Panthers are one and eight this season. I don't know if they're the worst team I've ever seen. Like, I feel like they're not getting blown out and they have players on their team, but they are still one and eight. And if they lose this game, they go to one and nine. And that's absolutely abysmal for an NFL team. So I feel like they're just kind of flying under the shit radar, but one and nine kind of speaks for itself. If it ends up happening, I don't think this is the week that the Panthers get a win. Like I said, the Cowboys are good at beating bad teams. We beat the Giants 49 to 17 last week. And, um, you know, we're, we're pretty good at doing that this season. So I'm going to still ride that hand. I feel safer with that. Uh, I don't like taking Cowboy spreads in my parlays in the fact that if they do lose, it's a double hurt. So probably not going to eye that. But Cowboys money line for sure this week. Cowboys to cover the 10 and a half points over 42 and a half. We mentioned they can put up points. And, you know, they're put, they've put up over 40 points multiple times this season, 42 against the Rams, 49 last week against the Giants, Cowboys 30, Panthers 17. All right, let's go next up here. We have the Chicago Bears who had just beaten the Panthers last week on Thursday night in Chicago. They're going to play the Detroit Lions who came off a field goal win against the Chargers. What did I say? Chargers games, field goals always comes down. Every, to a field every goal. Game. It's, yeah. it's like clockwork. Uh, Detroit at home is seven and a half point favorites. The over under is 48 and we got some history between these lions and bears here. The bears lead the series one Oh four to 77 all time. So Connor, we begin with you. How do you see this NFC North matchup playing out in Detroit? The bears covered against the saints last week. Was that it? Right? Yes. Seven points. Yeah. Um, I just think the, yeah, the Lions just have the potential. I think the Bears might have covered the last two weeks then. Is that right? Uh, I know because actually, no, the Panthers covered last week because the Bears were three-point favorites at home. And That's right. that game came down to a field goal, 1916. That's right. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I just don't think that Detroit is as bad offensively, obviously, as the other teams where they've kind of – stuck around in contention. Um, you know, the defense has been hit or miss for the Lions. You know, it was a shootout last week against the Chargers. You know, they're, the defense had been pretty good for Detroit earlier uh, in the season. But I, I think that, you know, seven and a half points, it's it's not ideal for that one touchdown kind of swing. But I, I think that Detroit can easily win by 10 or more uh, in this matchup, even with Justin Fields coming back. I was going to ask you, does Justin feel the information that Justin Fields being back? Does that sway your thought process in any way? If anything, it makes me think Detroit has a better chance of blowing them out just because we haven't really seen Justin Fields go off other than maybe two games this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's tough. You know, they also just had some chemistry. They had a rhythm going with their backup. Now he's back. Let's just see, see how it shakes up, but no, not, not really affecting too much. Um, I will say that I wouldn't be surprised if this game somehow is the under. It's kind of a high over under for the Bears mm -hmm. being involved. 
Um, I don't think that I don't think that Detroit allows as many points as they did last week, obviously, which would mm-hmm. blow that out. So I'd ride on the under. Um, I hate to cheer for an under, but I think that's more realistic this for this matchup. All right, so Detroit to cover seven, seven and a half, and then 48 points is too much. Go under that and the Lions to win this one. Um, if the Lions win this game, that would put them to eight and two. I would say probably one of the biggest surprises of the season, you know, when you, Katya, and I were picking out division winners, we were eyeing the Vikings before the season started. Definitely there was some hype around the Lions, but we wanted to see it happen before it came to fruition. But if they win this game, that puts them at eight and two. And for me, they're they're looking like runaways with that division. If if that is the case, I know the Vikings are lurking a little bit behind them, but that's just a very very good record. So you're you're probably going to win the division if that's the case. Agreed. So for me on this one, uh, Detroit with the seven and a half points for me that just feels safer at this point in the season. The thought that I'm having thinking about these two teams is the Lions are just going to be too much to handle for the Bears. Uh, You know, if the Bears are scrapping with the Panthers last week and they're winning 19 to 16, the Lions are just a whole different animal uh, that they got to have to go up there and go play. You know, the fact that Justin Fields is back, that is an outlier factor. He could go off. You know, we saw him we saw him go off against the commanders this year and they got their first win of the season. You know, I remember him putting up. 42 points last year against the Dolphins at home and running out of control. He is capable of doing that, but he hasn't played all that much this season. The Lions are clicking. Both of their running backs are absolute studs with Montgomery and Gibbs as well. Uh, If you look at, you know, any PFF on their team, they have the number one rated offensive line. That makes a big difference for teams in the trenches. And defense is supposed to be solid, but you're pointing out that they let up a lot of points last week against the Chargers. So I think they need some fixing to do on the defensive side of the ball. But for this matchup, seven and a half points, take the Lions. Uh, I know you have the under, but I had a score of like 30 to 20 with the mindset that this game is going to be in a dome. And then also the fact that Fields is coming back. I'll give the Bears 20 points, but I'll give the Lions 30. Detroit to win 30 to 20 in this matchup. All right, let's go next up here. We have your beloved Las Vegas Raiders who are now on a two-game winning streak. They officially own New York. If you look at New York on a map, it's going to say owned by Las Vegas Raiders at this point. They're going to play the Miami Dolphins uh, down in South Beach. Miami coming off of a bye, so they've had some time to rest. Miami is 13.5 points in this matchup. The over-under is 46 and the Raiders lead this series 21 to 19 all time. So Connor, you are a beloved Raiders fan. Do you think they can keep this momentum going and steal one from the Finns? I think they're going to keep the momentum going. Are they going to be able to steal one from the Finns? That is going to be the question. Um, I think realistically speaking, the spread is a little, it's a little high. I'm going to take Vegas to cover. I think that our defense has been playing it lights out. We have uh, Lane. We have a cornerback that can run a four three forty, and I think that he is capable of helping to contain Tyreek and Waddle, depending mm. on who's on. And I think that Antonio uh, Pierce is not an idiot, and that he knows if we're going to have a chance, we cannot let Tyreek get behind us. We're going to have to have double cover or double over him um, with safety help every time, and make other players make plays. So I think that if we can pressure Tua, though, like there's a really good shot where you can force some turnovers, um, you know, actually stay into this game. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be a pretty game. I think it's going to be rough to watch as a Raiders fan, but I think that there's there's chance. Uh, I'm going to take Miami to win, but I am going to take the Raiders to cover. Uh, I'm also taking the over on this game as well. Although the weather might be dependent if I was a perfect world, I'd like to double check the morning of. That's and then the, 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 the checking the weather is important. That has now become part of my routine. Yeah, but um, for the weather's sake, now it says maybe a little bit of drizzle, a little bit of wind, nothing crazy. Um, you know, football players make football plays in those. So unless it's a monsoon, I'm going to stick the over. Sticking with it. All right, over forty six for Connor Raiders. That's too many points with thirteen and a half. But the Finns to take this one. Uh, you know, I get upset, you know, you, you go first here. So I, I have some of this laid out and when it doesn't match what I say, I, again, uh, I, 
I should probably switch that over under. Um, for this matchup, you know, 13 and a half points. For me, that just jumped out. That's too many points. I feel like with the Raiders right now, like they're playing inspired football. Um, the Finns, yes, they are one of those teams, kind of like the Cowboys, who can put it on teams and win by a lot. And we see when they go up against good teams, they have not been able to get it done this year. But for an NFL game, 13 and a half points, that's a little too much for me. So Raiders to cover 13 and a half. That's the first thing that jumps out to me. Um, I can't pick the Raiders to beat the Dolphins right now. But the, the way both of these teams have looked, I think that's a fair assessment to say that the Finns should win a matchup like this if they play like we're capable of thinking that they're able to play. So Finns, money line as well. Uh, they also are coming off a bye, so they've got a lot of time to think about this game plan and prep for Aiden O'Connell and company coming to town, and this game is at home. So there are some advantages for Miami. Um, I'm going to ride under 46 for this matchup. I want to see more out of the Raiders' offense. Um, I'm not seeing them, you know, okay, that's – can't say that right away because I was just about to say I'm not seeing them eclipse 20 points. There was a long stretch of the season where they had an eclipse 20 points, but they did put up 36 points against the Giants like two weeks ago. But it is the Giants. So I, I want to see – also have a good D. That is the one thing. Like to your point, yes, uh, but the Jets' D is is rock solid. They're the real deal. So – you know, the last game was a little fluke in the sense of points scored compared mm. to what it could have been. Yeah, so I want to see the Raiders go on the road, and I want to see their offense put up points against Miami's defense before I start picking overs when it comes to Raiders games. But I see the Dolphins good for 27 in this matchup, and I see the Raiders good for 17 in this matchup. So Miami to win, Raiders to cover. That's where my mind's at right now. And I'll tell you, this is the last thing on that. We're either going to both be wrong to some degree or. If yeah, one they, of us is right. You have the over. Well, I have the that's under. true. But I will say this. If the Dolphins cover as much as we're both on Raiders cover, yeah, 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 okay. cover the odds of it getting over is much higher. Like the Dolphins are probably going to run up the score on the Raiders if that's the case. True, true, true. Tier 13 and a half is too many in my mind right now. And would you be as so confident to take the Raiders to cover 13 and a half in a parlay. I not just get, because I, I, know, I guess we'll not, get to that later. Not because <laughs> I know what the what the, what the Dolphins can do, like what they ran up on Denver, even with Pat Sertan and that defense, but it looked like they just gave up, obviously. But you know, it's possible that it could be a blowout anytime, anytime that the, the Dolphins play somebody. Just a matter of if the team's above 500 so far, it hasn't really worked. Yeah, so uh, well, we'll get to that segment later in the show. But for now, we both like the Raiders covering. Yeah. All right, let's go next up here. We got the New York Giants. They're going to play the Washington Commanders. We saw this matchup earlier in the year. Ugly one. Giants won that game 14-7. to But there have been some injuries since this time. And now the Giants are down to Danny DeVito, Tommy DeVito. I don't know. Did he throw a touchdown last week? He did. So we're going to call him Tommy DeVito this week. Commanders are eight and a half point favorites in this matchup. The over-under is a low one at 37 and a half. There's a long history between these two teams. The Giants lead 107 to 71 all time. Connor, how do you see this one shaking out in Washington? This is definitely one of those games that I'm not going to have on my custom box, uh, quad box with YouTube TV and red zone in one corner. But I will say, yeah, I mean, the injuries have plagued both teams. I still like Washington to win this outright from the money line perspective. Um, it's hard for me to, even with the spread being eight and a half to say that the giants can cover that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to err on the side of caution and the fact that there's better weapons and a healthier quarterback on the Washington commanders. So I'm going to take Washington minus eight and a half. I don't love it. Um, I'm going to take the under as well. I don't love that. The one thing I do love is Washington money line. It's the only thing I like. <laughs> Well, hey, look, funny enough, I love everything that you just said because I'm in alignment <laughs> with everything that, that with every uh, corner that you just picked there. Um, commander's money line for sure. Let's not overthink this. Like the Giants are the worst team in football. They look like I think the Giants would lose to the Panthers if both of the teams played right now because the way Tommy DeVito has looked, they put up zero points against the Raiders in Vegas. Like that's terrible. And last okay. week, you all were so confident that the Cowboys would beat them by 17 and a half. They lost that game 49 to 17. They let up 49 points to the Cowboys. I think they're looking like the worst team in football right now. 
Yeah, somebody's got to get Saquon out of there. Like that guy is just he's just stuck in a dumpster fire. Is way too talented. And how frustrated could you be to know that Daniel Jones got $40 million this year and then they put you on a franchise tag and you only got $10 million this year and you didn't get, you know, the long-term money that you were hoping for. So I agree with you. You know, there's, there's guys like him that are way too talented. And when you're a part of a shitty team like that, I mean, it's hard to get up for some of these games. Washington still in the hunt. Impressive last week. You know, Sam Howell coming down the stretch. Dude, 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 dude's a good quarterback. He's leading the league in yards right now. So, you know, that's impressive. And uh, they were pissed off when they when they lost this game the first time around this season. Uh, there was that interview with Jonathan Allen post game. He said, I'm sick of this shit. You know, it's been seven years. We're always losing these type games. So, look, a lot of revenge coming for Washington this week. Commander's money line, book it, put it in your parlay. For the purposes of us competing right now, Washington minus eight and a half. I wouldn't throw that into a parlay. I haven't seen the commanders cover a big spread yet this year. So it is a little dicey under 37 and a half. I don't see the giants offense scoring a lot of points commanders 24 to 13. All right, let's go next up here. We have the Arizona Cardinals and they're going to play your second favorite team, the Houston Texans. Houston is six point favorites in this matchup. The over under is 48. The Cardinals lead this series three to two all time. Both of us picked the Falcons to beat the Cardinals last week, but LJ had the Cardinals with K1 coming back, beating the Falcons, and they got the job done 25 to 22. So, Connery, pass it to you. Are you feeling good about the Texans this week, or do you think Kyler Murray can go to Houston, his home state of Texas, and steal one? Yeah, it's going to be tough because we just got a little dose week one off of an injury coming back after 10 months from Kyler, and he looked good. Like, he looked so good that with how bad Josh Allen was playing, I'm considering putting Kyler Murray in my starting quarterback spot for fantasy this week instead of taking Josh Allen out and put him on the bench. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know what to wouldn't think. Wouldn't hate on that one. Yeah, I, I just – I don't – I wouldn't – I don't know what to think about it. I know that C.J. Stroud is clearly the real deal. Um, offense is rolling in Houston. Um, even when their defense is giving up points, like, there's just no answer for C.J. Stroud and the receivers. Uh, I think Nico Collins might be coming back. Sounds like uh, Noah, whatever is maybe Noah Brown. Little, maybe Noah Brown might be Cowboys out. receiver last year, by the way, but we didn't utilize him the way he's getting yeah. utilized there. Yeah. So I mean, all that aside, I do think that Houston can win by six, but with, with Kyler Murray being back, I think it's going to be like another one of those who's going to have the ball last or a field goal type one. So I'm going to take Cardinals to cover just to play the safe route. I'm going to take the over as well. Um, I think this one goes over inside the dome, high powered offenses, young, healthy quarterbacks. I think they're going to sling the rock. Kyle might make some things happen on his feet as well. Who's your winner? Uh, I think Houston sneaks it. I think Houston money line. Yeah. But I, I do like Arizona to cover. I think it's, you know, I think it's a score like 31 to 28 or something like that. Oh yeah. Well, and we've seen that with the with the Texans this season, you know, in that game where they came back miraculously against the Bucks. The final score of that game was like 38 to 35 or something like that. So they're putting up a ton of points and in a dome environment uh, that bodes well for a track meet uh, with weather not being a factor. Uh, the stars in the galaxy are perfectly aligning with us with these last games here. Uh, Arizona. Scrappy team, you know, K1 coming back. We saw them be scrappy last week against the Falcons. There's just something about them where I feel like they've been covering this year. And so six points, I'll take them to cover six points. Um, Over 48, I agree with you on that one. I think with Kyler Murray and CJ Stroud, gunslinger, that's something that comes to my mind, you know, with both of these guys capable of putting up a ton of points. We have seen the Cardinals score 25 last week. And then the Texans, they scored 30 points in Cincinnati, who I value their defense highly, and they won that game. Uh, So I see over 48 as well. But, uh, you know, hey, look, I've gotten burned by the Texans three times this year in three different parlays where they were favored to lose. And I'm not making that mistake anymore. If I get screwed this week, it's going to happen. But I'm riding 
the Texas Big Ball Barbecue horns this week. Let's go, Texans. Get a win like this. You're favored by six points. Now's your time to do it. Don't fuck around with the Cardinals. Houston Texans, 26. Cardinals, 23. All right, let's go next up here. Tennessee Titans. This is an AFC South matchup. They're going to play the Jacksonville Jaguars, who I was beating my chest for last week. Now I feel so dumb trying to think that they could beat the 49ers. That was a three-point spread. They lost that game by 31 points. Jacksonville at home is seven-point favorites. The over-under is 39 and a half, and the Titans lead this series 34 to 23 all time. Tennessee not looking great last week. That final score is 20 to six against the Bucks. But historically, the Titans play the Jaguars well. So, Connor, we're going to pass it to you. How do you see this one shaping up in Jacksonville? Yeah, I think this one's another tough one. I mean, it's in Jacksonville, though. We thought Tennessee would be able to cover last week with Tampa. It was bad. Will Levis didn't play great at all. I mean, can they run it back again? The same thing? Same thing happening, I should say. Like, I don't know. Seven's close enough to where I'm going to just say I'm going to err on the home team here. I'm going to take the favorite. I don't love this at all. I don't like this matchup. It's not a game that sounds like very exciting. It sounds like a very slow mm. you know, punt, 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 touchdown here and there kind of game, maybe a couple big plays. But I want to ride with Jacksonville minus seven. Against my better judgment, I think that that is the better call. Um, just because Tennessee is so un- unpredictable right now and they're not reliable on how they're playing. So I will take that. Um, it's also kind of a low under, but I don't see Jacksonville scoring, you know, into the thirties necessarily, like maybe they touch 30, but I don't see Tennessee covering the distance uh, with that. So if I'm going to take Jacksonville to cover, I'm going to take the under, I think it's going to be a one-sided show. I could be so wrong, though, but that's how I'm feeling. All right. So Jags covering <laughs> seven points. Uh, under 39 and a half slow matchup in the AFC South, but the Jags to take care of business and win this one. And if the Jags do win this game, that puts them at, let's see here, seven and three. Uh, and if the Texans win this week, that would put them at six and four. So the AFC South is still up for grabs. And we saw one of my parlay losers the first time around the Texans went to Jacksonville this year. They blew out the Jaguars. So the Texans very well capable of maybe stealing the AFC South this year, if they Mm -hmm. can go on a run down the stretch here. Um, Look, every week there's a dog of the week and not all these games are obvious. And that's something I have to keep in the back of my mind when making some of these picks, you had a few dogs last week and there's just some things that worry me. So with this seven point spread, historically, if you want to think back to it, Derrick Henry usually goes off against the Jaguars. I don't know what it is about about the Jags, but I've seen him run, you know, 99 yard touchdowns against the Jaguars and he plays them well and they play them well, historically this year though, Jaguars for sure looking like the better team. They won on a five game winning streak before they lost to the Niners last week. So the Jaguars better team than the Titans this year. But for me, when these two teams play as a divisional matchup, I don't know what it is, but Tennessee tends to play them well. So for me, I'm worried about the Jaguars this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Where will I side on the air of caution? Tennessee plus seven. Um, I don't, you know, not that they are better, but sometimes in divisional matchups, you have teams that just play other teams better. So that's what's going into my psyche for that. Uh, I have over 39 and a half for this one. I have the Jaguars winning though, 23 to 17. I think this is going to be a close game closer than people expect. I want to see the Jaguars get back to the form after getting their ass kicked last week against the 49ers before I jump back on that bandwagon, but I can't pick the Titans to win a game right now. You know, they lost to the Steelers. They lost to the Bucks last week. Those aren't the best teams. And uh, for me to pick them to beat the Jaguars, that's just too tough to do. Jaguars 23-17. I was thinking about putting the Jaguars in my parlay this week. We'll get to that later, but this is one of those trap games, I fear. All right, next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're going to play the Cleveland Browns. Unfortunately, Cleveland has lost their quarterback for the season, Deshaun Watson, with a fractured shoulder. So P.J. Walker or Dorian Thompson-Robinson will get the start for the Browns. 
Cleveland at home is one and a half point favorites. The over under is 33 and the Steelers lead this one 81 to 62 all time. Connor, how do you see this one playing out in Cleveland? I'm doubling down week two. I said the Browns and they lost. So week 11, I'm saying the Browns and they're going to win. <laughs> I don't need Deshaun Watson. TJ Walker has been fine. They're at home this time. Defense is even more fired up. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just I just can't bet on the Steelers against a team like the Browns, even without Deshaun Watson. They they won some games earlier. They still move the ball. Uh, such a low score for the over-under. So I'm going to take the over. And what I'm a gonna... sad over-under. 33 points. Yeah, I'm taking the over. Like I just fundamentally can't bet the under on 33, even with these two teams. I said I thought that the, the Packers and the Steelers would go under last week. Somehow they went over. The Packers have that was painful. I was paying for you. Yeah. So both teams are somehow able to score and, and again, not like horrible defenses either. So um yeah, I'm gonna take Browns minus one and a half, obviously winning that uh matchup, and then I'm gonna take the over at 33. And uh again, just gonna be a sloppy backyard football kind of game, I think, from these guys, but definitely the the next up in line kind of uh kind of game this week. Well, and so big implications now, especially with Joe Burrow being out for the season. The Ravens now at eight and three. The winner of this game, both teams were six and three, would go to seven and three. So things are going to get interesting coming down the stretch here in the AFC North. So this this one definitely has uh, potential division winning and also playoff implications for wild cards. Um, Sad for, for you. I, I will not forget the game you lost in Survivor this season. That was the Monday night game with the Browns who had a lead and blew it to the Steelers who are good at somehow, some way, getting defensive touchdowns and winning games. Uh, I lost the Cowboys against the Cardinals earlier this season, so we were both out early. Um, I like the Steelers this week. I got to come out and say it. We are on different sides of the islands. I don't like the news that Deshaun Watson is out for the season. Uh, I've seen the Steelers beat the Packers last week, you know, beat the Titans the week before that they beat the Rams in recent week. The Steelers are six and three by some weird, mysterious way that they're able to win football games. And I think now, you know, for the Browns to Sean Watson out for the season, Nick Chubb out for the season, you're down to your, you know, second, third string quarterbacks going up against that Steelers defense. I have revenge. Revenge is a theme for this week. Teams getting back at teams that beat them earlier in the season. And I like the Steelers to get revenge this week. They lost the first time around in Pittsburgh, but I like them to go steal one in Cleveland this week. So we will be on different sides of the AFC North Island here. Pittsburgh plus one and a half over 33. That's just a very low over under. I looked at the weather. It's looking like partly sunny in Cleveland. So we're not dealing with rain this weekend. Steelers to win 21 to 16 and you wouldn't believe it, but I may eye them later on in the show. All right, next up here, we have the LA chargers coming off of a three point loss in classic fashion last week to the lions. They're going to play the green Bay Packers who went down the stretch with the Steelers last week, but unfortunately could not get the job done on the road. The chargers are three point favorites this week. The over under is 44 and the Packers lead this series 10 to two all time. So, Connor, we begin with you. How do you see this one playing out in Lambeau? Oh, I'm seeing it to be a field goal type of game, just like Vegas is setting the odds for. I think uh, – It's a Chargers game. <laughs> Chargers game. I think being at home for Green Bay is going to allow them to have a little extra 12th man energy from the crowd and uh, from their own environment. Um, obviously not a dome in Southern California anymore, so the weather might be impactful because it's just colder now, especially up there. Um, but that being said, in the cold air – the rock flies further. I think it's going to be a higher scoring game. I think both teams, you know, defense wise aren't the best, but they're not great. They're very mid. And I think mm. that that uh, is going to allow for some scoring from both sides. And again, some turnovers, probably uh, Herbert still got a bum finger on one hand. So yep. just taking all that in. I think that the chargers can squeak it out. It might be the chargers kicking the field goal to win. It might be the chargers holding off on a drive, you know, to win by three to four, five something points. But uh, I think it's going to be coming down to, you know, one possession game at the end of the game. But I think the Chargers get this one back. And I'm looking at the AFC West here. Broncos, four and five. Chargers, four and five. Raiders, five and five. So that's looking like a little, you know, tight race there uh, underneath the Chiefs. 
uh, Chargers, Raiders would be looking for wild card spots, just like Steelers and just like Browns as well. Uh, so things are open within the AFC and teams need to get wins like this uh, if they are on the hunt. Packers look like, you know, I mean, what what are they right now? I don't I don't think they stand a chance to be in the hunt in the NFC. They are sitting at three and six. Uh, so very, very unlikely that they will. But for the Chargers, you got to win a game like this if you want to be in the hunt and make your your playoff race. Um I worry about the Chargers and the fact that, it, you know, Justin Herbert has this huge cast on his hand. It, it looks like his left hand, so it's not his throwing hand. But, you know, one sack hitting the ground, that could be really bad for him. Also, Keenan Allen last week went out of that game uh, with the shoulder in, uh, injury. So he's looking like day-to-day. -day. And he's also looking like their best offensive weapon this season over Austin Eckler, which is surprising but they've been able to connect and obviously put up a lot of points like last week going down to the wire with the lions. Um, I'm going to roll with the chargers this week. Uh, you know, I think they're a better team than the Packers, so they should be able to go on the road and handle business. Uh, Green Bay is just, they're not looking like their normal selves that we're used to in the past with them. And this Jordan love experiment is uh, not looking all that great. I have Aaron Jones on one of my fantasy teams. And other than week one, he has been uh, the 35th ranked running back in the NFL. So that's uh, that's messing with some money there. Um, Chargers minus three, under 44. Chargers 24-17 in this matchup. Okay, we have Sunday afternoon football. We just went over the morning set. That's one o'clock on the East Coast. Now we're going to move on to four o'clock on the East Coast. And we have the Tampa Bay Bucks. They're coming off a win last week against the Titans to go and play the San Francisco 49ers, who had a massive win last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. San Francisco is 12-point favorites in this matchup. The over-under is 41.5, and, and the 49ers lead the series 19-7 to all time. Connor, do you think that there's any way the Bucks can sail their way all the way over to the West Coast and steal some booty from the Niners? I have no idea. I'll tell you this. I, I don't I don't think that they could win. I think there's a there's a slim chance the NFL that there's a way they could win. But they haven't been able to own the ground as a Rashad White owner in fantasy. They haven't been able to really dominate the run game all year um, with Fred Warner and the rest of the linebacker crew in San Francisco crashing the, the swing passes and screens. I just they're, they're going to have to beat them by taking deep shots. And it's going to have to be like a Baker Mayfield 400-yard pass. Chris, Evans, Chris Godwin. Yeah, they're going to have to get everybody involved in order to beat the Niners. Um, and their defense is going to have to be on, which their defense isn't horrible. But they're going to have to make Brock Purdy make mistakes and maybe get lucky with a turnover or two from like somebody like Debo or Ayuk fumbling it. You know, Debo, mm -hmm. as aggressive as he runs – has coughed up the ball, you know, here and there across the open field. So you're going to need to get lucky with something of that. Um, so, you know, are they, are they going to win? Probably not. I'd take the Niners money line. Um, 12 points at home. We've seen the Niners blow teams out. Mm -hmm. We've also seen the Niners somehow choke, mm -hmm. uh, which they shouldn't have, you know, in certain games. I don't think this is a game they're going to choke. I would tease this game down, and I probably will. Um, but from the sake of this, uh, st this format, I will take the Niners minus 12 just because I believe in that a lot more than I believe in Tampa Bay coming into their house mm -hmm. and getting things done. And two touchdowns is a very easy cover for the Niners because they're healthy and they have the talent and they're at home. So I will take that over under wise. Again, it could be they could take some time to get going. But it's a low enough over under that I'm going to ride the fact that Tampa Bay doesn't have a shutout type game. And I think they put some points on the board. And as long as that's happening, I think that over hits. So Niners minus 12 and the over lock it in. All right. Bang, bang, Niner gang. Connor likes the Niners this week to cover that 12 points. Also the over 41 and a half. The wizard has spoken and the Niners to take care of business. Um, you know, when I looked at this game, this was another one where I had not the spidey senses, but the <laughs> dog senses going into this one. So the, the concern that I have is 12 points is too much, sort of like the Dolphins and the Raiders game this week, where I feel like 13 and a half points is too much. But 
I wouldn't be surprised if somehow, some way, Tampa Bay went in there and stole a game because there are upsets that happen each week. And this could be one of them for a Bucks team that they need to win. I mean, the Bucks are sitting at four and five. They're behind the Saints at five and five. They're in a worse position than the Niners are at six and three. So there is a level of desperation for the Bucks to try to get into the playoff hunt. The Niners can afford to lose. The Bucks pretty much can't afford to lose. That's one difference there. Um, Tampa Bay plus 12 for that sheer fact that I just have a little bit of a dog sense here that they'll come out. They're going to put it all hands on deck for this one going out West and try to steal a win. Um, over 41 and a half points. Uh, although the Bucks defense, you know, has been good in the past. We saw CJ Stroud put up over 38 points against them. So I'm not too worried about the Niners being able to put up points against the Bucks defense. I will give the 49ers 27 points in this matchup, and I will give the Bucks 20 points in this matchup. I think that they're going to put in a good effort, but for me, it's just too hard to pick the Bucks to beat the Niners. So I agree with you. The first thing that jumps out to me is 49ers money line. Those odds are minus 650, but if I have to trust the pulse for each team, I have to roll with the Niners defense going all the way across their offense plus special teams all being better than the Bucks. And if the Bucs win this game, um, you know, they're going to they're gonna steal one for the Niners, and the Niners will be surprised if that happens. All right, let's go next up here. We have the New York Jets. This is an AFC East matchup. Uh, they're coming off of their loss. How dare I pick them to beat the Raiders last week? And they're going to play the Buffalo Bills, who I tripled down on on Monday night. And this might not be the same Bills team that we are used to as of the past few seasons. Buffalo at home is a seven point favorite. The over under is 39 and a half. The Bills lead the series 68 to 58 all time. So, Connor, do you think that the Bills can redeem themselves after that shit show on Monday night against the Broncos? I think they have to. Like, I think whatever they're doing in practice this week, whatever they're doing to prepare and what they're, you know, hopefully holding themselves accountable to, I think this is a game like they lost to them week one. Um, I think that they have to, and this was, that was the first game of the season, right? Mm -hmm. Aaron yeah. Rodgers, fourth player. They, the weren't, game. Yeah, they weren't stoked about that. Um, they obviously got a sour taste from blowing it to the Broncos. They're, they're back at home. Wait, they were at home against Denver, right? They were at home against Denver Monday yeah. night. So yeah, they're, they're staying at home on a slightly short week, but mm -hmm. this is a statement. I mean, if, if the bills want to go to the playoffs, they're in the hunt right now. They're not even leading their division. Like I, they have to win this game. They have to. Um, I think that it's one that unless they decide that unless they don't, they're not going to get beat unless they decide to lose like they did last week, they're going to cover seven points. And I don't see a world where the jets, I mean, I, I'm just going to take the under, I think it's a divisional game at home, low enough spread. I'm taking the under and I'm taking bills minus seven, but like what kind of bills are we going to get? I don't know. Slams no book shut. Like I have no idea. <laughs> All right, circle the wagons. The Bills get back on track this week. A quick look at the AFC East. The Dolphins lead at six and three. The Bills trail in second place at five and five. And the Jets trail in third place at four and five. So if the Jets can win this game this week, that would be the second time that they've beaten Buffalo this season. And they would go to second place in the division trailing Miami where they get to play Miami coming up here in recent weeks for the first time this season. So the jets AFC East aspirations heavily rely on this game. Um, Bill screwed me Monday night. So they, I'm mad. I'm so mad at them. I can't even put a word on it. The fact that they lost against the Broncos, but the fact that Zach Wilson is the jets quarterback. I think LJ at this point has convinced me. I try to I try to argue for him that I feel like he has unreal laser arm talent, but the decisions that he makes, we watch with that pick against Belaine, uh, not the best decision making for Zach Wilson. I don't trust him in this matchup going up into Buffalo. That Buffalo crowd, all hands on deck for them uh, hosting the Jets this week. Um, Buffalo, though, you know, I'm not fully around to them blowing teams out like they were doing in the beginning of the season. They've looked very sketchy as of late. So seven points for me is too much. I will take the Jets to cover seven points. I will go under 39 and a half with you as well on this one, Connor, for an AFC East matchup. 
And I'm going to ride the Bills to take this one 21 to 17. The Bills are on timeout, though, and you do not get to be in the parlay this week. All right, next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks. They are going to play the LA Rams. This is an NFC West matchup. Seattle is one point favorites on the road. The over under is 46. The Seahawks lead this series 27 to 25 all time. We did not get to see the Rams play last week because they were on a bye. The Seahawks squeak one out against the commanders at home. So Connor, how do you see this one playing out in SoFi? Is Matt Stafford back? Do we know that? Yes. He is. He is. Okay. Um, it doesn't really change what I was thinking. <laughs> um, you know, I think divisional game, they already play each other this season too. I think they did, right? This is the second time they've, they're playing yes, each other? Yes, right? the Rams beat the Seahawks earlier this season in Seattle. I yeah, think it was I mean, the first game of the season. Okay. Um, I mean, the way I'm looking at this, there's something about road teams. Do I have these notes correct? Is it Rams plus one? The Yes. So C- Seattle yeah. on the road is a one-point favorite, which is basically a coin flip. Yeah. Even though their, their records would not reflect that in the NFC West, the 49ers are six and three, the Seahawks are six and three, and the Rams are three and six, but they're only one point dogs at home. Yeah, I'm going to take the Seahawks. I was thinking about, you know, if the Seahawks were plus one, then I was going to say there is that, you know, the under three point underdogs divisional, like very high chance of those being both unders and upsets. Um, the fact that they're favored by a point, still a coin flip kind of pick them game. I'll still take them. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll take the under and I'll take Seahawks minus one. I think they get the, the punch back that they need, steal one back in LA, kind of make up for that first loss. All right. So Connor likes the Hawks to come back down, fly their way down to LA and steal one this week. Um, I'm not going to lie, you know, dog of the week. Well, I got to pick some upsets here. And this was the one game I was thinking for upset. The Rams beat the Seahawks in week one. There's no reason they can't do it again. Maybe the Seahawks are just one of those teams that the Rams tend to play well in divisional matchups. The concern I have, though, is I was talking about this being a revenge week. And the Rams already stole a game from the Hawks this year. So now it's the Seahawks' turn to steal one back. That's That's something that I am a little worried about here. But I'm going to go with what I had pre-podcast. I think that there's got to be upsets that happen each week. And I, I'll take the Rams to win this game. Uh, LA plus one, under 46. Uh, LJ was texting us. He really likes the under for this game and also for the Jets and Bills matchup. And then for this matchup, a three-point game that this will come down to. So I will take the Rams at home, 23 to 20. You know, the Seahawks were a playoff team last year, but I've seen them blow some games this season. Uh, Things got close against the Commanders last week. They weren't able to close them out. And now with Matt Stafford being back and coming off of a bye week, I think the Rams have a lot of time to prep for this matchup. So for the purposes of this podcast, put me on the Rams money line for this week and to cover one point. All All right, right, let's go. Next up here, we have Sunday night football. This is 830 on the East Coast. And the Minnesota Vikings, who you had the cojones to pick last week, they're going to play the Denver Broncos, who are also coming off of a win last week against the Bills. Broncos are two-point favorites at home on Sunday night football. The over-under is 42-and-a-half, and the Vikings lead the series 8-7 to seven all time. So, Connor, how do you see this one playing out in Denver? This is probably just out of spite, but and the the Josh Dobbs effect, but I'm taking Vikings, dogs, plus two, and money line, and the over. Um, the Broncos, maybe they maybe they can score now. We'll call it that. We'll call spade a spade. But um, so can the so can the Vikings. And Josh Dobbs brings something to the table that Kirk Cousins couldn't. We might be getting Jefferson back. I need him to come might. back for on fantasy purposes. Um <laughs> But yeah, I think that uh, I think Minnesota can come into Denver and can easily win, um, assuming that they win the turnover battle. It's really what it's coming down to against Denver. If you win the turnover battle, you're winning. You're winning that no matter what, unless you're a substantially better team. But um, yeah, I think Minnesota has the, the the capabilities to do it. I also just hate the Broncos and seeing them win. Sure. So I think realistically, like all that together is a perfect storm for a Vikings upset on primetime. 
All right. Hey, well, I know the story. I know, I know the story of, you know, in spite, you are a Raiders fan to, to spite the Broncos. So them losing makes you happy. I, I like some of the, that juice instincts that goes into a pick like this. Um, you know, also for the Vikings, you picked them last week and they beat the Saints. So they got some magic going on here. I believe they're on a three game winning streak. So the Vikings looking impressive at six and four, uh, when many people would have thought they were left for dead. Um, having Kirk Cousins out for the season. I think the big shift for them was that Monday night game against the Niners. Uh, they were probably like seven or nine point underdogs in that game, and they ended up beating the Niners. No, you know what? They were 10 point underdogs in that game with the Niners coming to town, and they won that game. And since then, they've rattled off some wins here. So there is something to get behind with the Vikings. Um, it's so hard for me to pick the Broncos, but I feel like this is a different Broncos team that I'm thinking about now because they are on a three game winning streak. They shot my parlay three weeks ago by beating the chiefs 24 to nine, you know, the week after that they beat the Packers and then, you know, they went on a bye. And then this past Monday night, we saw them beat the bills in Buffalo. And we're also seeing Russell Wilson play a lot better right now and he's making some magic happen so there is that factor to think about too uh in this matchup i gotta let russ cook for this matchup it kind of pains me to say it but i'm just going to objectively try to pick this game denver minus two under 42 and a half it's a broncos game i don't know if i ever can pick overs and broncos games and the broncos to squeak this one out 21 to 20 don't feel great about this one at all will not definitely put this in a parlay, but for the purposes of this podcast, I'm riding the pony train this week on Sunday night football. Okay. No, I mean, you're just, you're drinking the Kool-Aid. Did you say 21-20? 21-20. Oh, yeah. Then then you would do minus Minnesota. Oh, true, 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 true. All right, let's fix that. Let's fix that. I just want to make sure you're – Let's, your let's go right. Let's go 21-17 Broncos okay. in this Fair matchup. Yeah, thank yeah. you, thank yeah. you for that correction. I was like, no, I, can, I can do that. I can do the that Broncos, now. what what was that score on Monday night? That was like 22 to 24, a half a point under 46 and a half. That under hit by half a point on Monday night. There's going to be some drama on Sunday night football. But I'm going to ride uh I'm going to ride the pony squeaking this one out. And that puts them at 5 and 5, which kind of blows my mind. All right, let's go next up here. We have a Super Bowl rematch. This is the game of the week. Um, this is Super Bowl rematch. Philadelphia Eagles are going down to Kansas City to play the Chiefs. Uh, Eagles, I believe, were on a bye last week. And the Chiefs, let's see what they did last week. I think they were on a bye, too. The Chiefs were also on a bye, yeah. Yeah, so Chiefs and Eagles both coming off of a bye for last week. So they've got full time in preparation to get ready for this game and uh, you know, recover from, for some injuries that they may have. Kansas City at home is a two-and-a-half-point favorite in this matchup. The over-under is 45-and-a-half, which I thought was pretty low, but I looked into the weather, and it's saying it's an 80% chance of rain for this Monday night matchup. The mm -hmm. Chiefs lead this series 6-4 to four all time. So, Connor, how do you see this one playing out in Arrowhead? Damn, well, I had just done over until you said the rain – I don't want to cheer for it. So did I. That was the first thing that I thought about was that's way too low for both teams. Yeah. And then I All looked right, at well, the weather, 80% chance of rain. That's the best I can give you right now. All right. If that changes, then just know everybody listening, the over is a more exciting one to bet on. It's still within the realm of possibility. But I'm going to take the under just because of the weather. I think both defenses uh, have stayed the same from last year, if not gotten better. So I think that there, it's not like every drive is going to be a touchdown. You know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of back and forth lead changes, hopefully to make it exciting. We haven't really had a great primetime game really this year. There's been very few. I think this is the chance to have a really good one. And I think that the Eagles are going to want this more than the chiefs. Um, but being at Arrowhead, it's going to be tough, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to take the same thing I took for the Super Bowl last year. I'm going to take the Eagles. Um, I'm going to take the Eagles. So in this one, plus two and a half, Take the under just due to inclement weather. I, I would take the over if the weather clears up. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think it's low enough. I'm taking Philly money line on that. I think that this is the shot for them to to prove it and also to show like, hey, if we see each other in the playoffs, like we can beat you now. Like that's, that's kind of what I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking at this like. 
And I think with the Eagles sitting there at eight and one, if they do win this game this week in Kansas city, they take the crown for at least regular season for right now to be the best team in the NFL. Nine and one is a very impressive record. And uh, if they can go to Arrowhead and get this done, uh, they, they take the crown as of right now, the chiefs record on the opposite hand, they are sitting at seven and two. So if they win this game, the Eagles and the chiefs, will be tied for the best records in football at eight and two apiece. Uh, and so for these teams as well, that are looking for one seeds going into the playoffs and getting home field advantage, this is going to be a big matchup for both teams in their respective conferences. Um, for me in this matchup, I have the same bias that you have when picking against the Broncos. I don't want to see the Eagles win this game at all whatsoever. So I'm going to think about all good thoughts for Kansas city in this matchup. You know, Kansas City, we err on the side that it is Patrick Mahomes, best quarterback in the NFL, and it is that offense that, you know, is absolutely potent, even though they've lost Tyree Kill in recent years. But look at the final score to that Super Bowl uh, where they beat the Eagles, putting up over 30 points. So it's not like their offense can't thrive without Tyree Kill. They're proving that they can put up points. And also we saw them go up against the Dolphins overseas in Germany a few weeks back. And this is the Dolphins offense who scored over 70 points in an NFL game against the Broncos earlier this season. And the Chiefs defense held them to 14 points total, stripping Tyree Kill, picking it up and taking it back the other way. There are elements to Kansas City to get behind. In this matchup, I got to roll with what I'm hoping for. So I'm going to take Kansas City minus two and a half. I'm going to go under 45 and a half just because I saw that 80% rain chance that's going to happen in Kansas City. And then I will take the Chiefs to win 24 to 21. I didn't speak about too much the Eagles just there and giving some reasoning as to why I think they lose. But we saw these teams go up in the Super Bowl. The Chiefs beat them. So, you know, clearly they are the better team as of a last matchup we saw between the two teams in recent history. And the Eagles, although they are eight and one, they've been dancing with some teams. You know, they've gone down to the wire with the commanders a few times here. They've gone down to the wire uh, with the Cowboys in recent weeks as well. I'm not seeing them convincingly beat teams the way the Ravens have convincingly been beating teams this year. So I'm going to roll with Kansas City at home 24 to 21 in this matchup. All right, we covered every single game from the Week 11 slate, and that was a full slate, I feel like. Maybe there's a few teams that are on a bye this week, but that was a lot of games to cover. Now, of everything that we talked about, we got to concoct. We got to get in the kitchen, get our ingredients here, and cook up that parlay that's going to cash in this week. So, Connor, for everything that we just went through, how's your Week 11 parlay looking? All right, so this one, sometimes, you know, you, you try to plan it too far out. You try to like really analyze it and it go with the gut one or two legs. So I'm going straight from the gut off this one today. Mm -hmm. Best way to do and it. And I'm going to try to just do a four. I, I think three, three legs is just not enough juice for the squeeze. That's what teasers are for. Mm -hmm. So to do the four leg parlay, we're putting down Washington money line. Like that. We're doing the, uh, if you can get the 49ers money line, put it in there. If you can't, put minus 12. That's going to be our big bet for it. I need a side. Got to pick a side. Oh, well, I mean, uh, for the sake of, I don't know if it's on my book, minus 12. Minus 12? All right. 49ers minus 12. Just know if there's an asterisk there for next week. No, it's 49ers <laughs> minus 12. You no, know, but anybody that has the ability when to they lose, but When they win by 10, that's an L for you <laughs> next week. I'm just saying, if your book has money line, take money line. But I'm going to be taking minus twelve because I don't okay. think I have it. Okay. Uh, but then uh, let's also do uh, Chargers minus three. Bolt right bang or don't bang. I'm going to yeah. tell LJ you're a Chargers fan. Yeah, and then um, I think I really like uh, the over in the Cardinals uh, Texas game, mm, forty eight. Yeah. All right, so a four-team parlay this week for Connor. Commanders, money line against the Giants. 49ers, minus 12 at home with the Bucks visiting. The Chargers, they're going on the road to Wisconsin to go play the Green Bay Packers. They're going to cover that three points. 
and it will be a duel. It'll be a Texas shootout with Kyler Murray. And we also have CJ Stroud in Houston. That game's going over 48 points. I like it. I like it. I like it. All right. So for my parlay this week, uh, no five for six, no, you know, six for seven. We're going seven for seven this week. And uh, this is seven money lines. So I'm going to, I'm going to stand behind this. Give or take, I do have a separate bet that is a nine-leg parlay. The Ra- the Ravens were a money line to start this week, so that would technically be eight legs that I have to overcome. I will admit, though, that I had to pull out the Jaguars in my money line for the purposes of this podcast. There's just something a little weary about them in Tennessee, so I had to pull them out, but I have the other seven legs, so that's what we're going to roll with this week, a seven-leg parlay. We're going to start off Commander's money line. I'm with you on the same page as that. We're going to go Lions money line against the Bears this week. This is the week that I'm taking the Texans money line. I'm putting my faith in them against the Cardinals at home. I'm going 49ers money line against the Bucks. I'm going Cowboys money line against the Panthers. I told you this is the revenge week. Steelers money line against the Browns in Cleveland. And last up, sadly to say, Dolphins money line against the Raiders in Miami seven leg parlay for you this week all money lines all right last up we have survivor I've died multiple times this year I'm ashamed to have picked the Bengals last week it should have rode with the Seahawks for the purposes of this podcast but Connor you're surviving after taking the Colts last week who's your week 11 survivor yeah, I uh, I'm trying to think who I maybe have. I don't know if I picked the commanders at all this year. I know they were picked early for a couple of reasons. Um, I never picked them. So I would say pick the commanders if you haven't. Uh, but to throw a, an A-B test in there for you, I know I haven't picked the chargers yet this year. And I would say to take the chargers. Those are the, those are the two. But commanders first, chargers second if you've taken them already. All right. So the commanders, I don't even know what the sound a commander makes or, you know, what they're about, but Hey, it's all nation capital, Washington commanders. They're going to take care of business against the giants. And then if not the bolt gang, they're going over to green Bay and taking care of business against the Packers, which you got them at minus three this week. So you're big on the bolt gang this week. I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, For me, I'm going to ride with you on the commanders as well. I don't see Tommy DeVito getting a dub in the NFL yet against the Commanders. And if not, ride the Detroit Lions this week against the Bears. I think the Lions are too much to handle for the Bears. Um, All right, Connor, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate this week 11 edition of Parlay with the G's. Um, You know, let me know how those recipes come along. Uh, You know, the the chef over there has been cooking. So uh, we, we need more on the gram. We need some, we'll need, we'll make some more and uh, let's cook up some other, uh, other bets on the side as well this week. A lot of good keys in action. A lot you know. of, a lot of cashing, you know, the side ones are hitting. It's time for the main ones to come in yes. there, you know? Exactly. All right, All Alex. Right. See ya.